Okay, in this particular video, we're going to go into prepping the cache container. This is the next in the cache series. What we need for this, obviously the container with all the items inside that's going to be going into the cache. I use lawn and leaf trash bags, the 55 gallon. Those are more than large enough to go over this 19 gallon Rubbermaid style container. This particular container is made by Sterilite. You also need camping air pump, one that you can reverse, not just put air in, but also take air out. Now, waterproof the hell out of these containers. You put something in the ground, moisture will try to work its way in one way or another. Even if you're in the desert, the ground does get wet. Waterproof this on the outside of the container and waterproof the contents on the inside. Now, look at the inside here. As you see, you're not going to find too many containers that are green on the outside. Get yourself some uh, spray paint that's designed to work good with plastic materials. Get what you can. Spray paint it. Now on the inside here, items are waterproofed as much as possible. Stuff like this, the ramen noodles and that, it's double bagged. Inside each of these, eight packages of ramen noodles, they're put inside one Ziploc bag, closed up, all the air is pressed out. That's then put in another Ziploc bag and the air is pushed out. Try to alternate which end opens up. So the first bag, when it gets put in the next bag, the opening will go to the bottom of the next bag and it's closed up. Inside each case, I also go through and I put in contents list. That's inside its own little Ziploc bag. This is a C case. This is, as it says on here, an individual rations case. I put when it was packed, when it was inventoried. This was packed in 2021, inventoried in June 2021. Underneath that is the contents. The individual ration case that I have right here that I'm prepping for going out on a mission tomorrow contains 24 freeze-dried entrees, 24 pouches of individual onion soup, 24 pouches of chicken noodle soup, individuals. These are your cup of soups. 16 packages of chicken ramen, 8 packages of chili ramen, 8 packages of beef ramen, 8 packages of shrimp ramen. Eight packages of spicy ramen, the stuff that costs a little bit more. Four pouches of chicken noodle soup. These are the individual bag soups that are meant to feed a small group of people. Six rolls of toilet paper. One drink mix container, and this one it happens to be Tang. And then you should put vitamins in here also. This particular case has two bottles of vitamin C. Contents of this case is meant to supply the individual or the fire team or the squad for as long as possible. You may be wondering why don't, didn't I just fill this up with Freeze-dried meals, why did I put in things like the ramen noodles? Cost. Individual ramen noodles, around 25 cents a uh, package. Freeze-dried meal, you're looking at between $8 to $10, depending on where you are and the particular item. You go with what you can afford and what the purpose is. 
Now, as much as possible, fill every available space inside here. I know there's still a little bit of room. I could have put some other items in there, but I got to get this out tomorrow. So everything's in here. It was inventoried. Contents list is in here. Now we're going to go through, prep this case. Find the end of the bag on the roll. Now, especially with a case like this, you may come back to it more than once. You may want to put a couple extra bags on top in case you open this up, take a few items, reseal it, put it back in the ground. Well, if you damage one of the bags, you want to replace it. So. Feed off a couple bags here. With the way the lids are on these, they had this little lip. These extra bags fit in here just fine. So. Take our bag. That's going to be the first layer. Open it up. Make sure that the container is all the way to the bottom of the bag. Take the end here. Close it off. Make sure you got a little path going to the inside. Take the end of your hose. Stick it inside the bag. Make sure your air pump is on remove, not supply. And then start. You may have to adjust the uh, bag around the end of the nozzle every once in a while. To make sure it doesn't. doesn't get stuck on the end. Pull out as much air as you can. 
push the bag down to the container as close as you can. Take it, tie it off on itself. Make sure all of the opening for the bag is on the outside of your knot to try to cut down on air getting back inside. Get your next bag. And reverse what we just did. Like with the uh, bags of the individual items inside, reverse the openings. You can see one of the reasons why we use the air pump to pull the air out is because sometimes these things have a tendency to blow up like balloons. Same as we did before. Get the air hose inside, clamp off around the hose. So it's going out. Try to pull out as much air as you can, especially with the uh, subsequent layers of bags, the ones outside your initial. Clamp it off, twist it. Try to push the knot as close as you can to the container. I'm going to be flipping to the other side again. One more bag.
tight as you can. Twist off the end of the bag. Loop it, knot it. And move your knot as close as you can to the container. When it goes in the ground, try to make sure that the open part of the bag faces down. If it faces up, you're on the risk Water can come down through the soil, especially when it rains, work its way inside. Face it downward as you're putting the dirt over the top. Now, if you're putting multiple cases inside the same cache spot, it doesn't hurt to mark the case with some masking tape. So on this one, there would be a piece of tape saying there's going to be a C at this location. So when it's in the ground, we get it covered up. When we're doing the sketch of the area, we know which, which case is in which location for that particular cache spot. And there you go. That's how to prep the cases for putting in the ground for a cache. You can use the same procedure if you're putting tubes in the ground or whatever you're going to try. I wouldn't try wrapping a barrel in uh, trash bags, but smaller containers like this, this should work pretty well on waterproofing and protecting the contents against moisture. Moisture and oxygen are two of the things that can destroy cache. What we're doing here, we're waterproofing it, try to keep the moisture out, get the items to last longer. Some items inside cache cases that absorb a lot of moisture, things like uh, white flour, salt, spices and that stuff, uh, powdered dish soap, I have some that I put in some cases for use at mess kit cleaning sites at potential base camp locations. That stuff is vacuum sealed with a uh, food saver and then it still gets double bagged over that with Ziploc bags. Protect it as best you can. So it'll last longer, so it'll hopefully be there when you need it. Hopefully the next video after this will be us putting cases in the ground, but it's really going to depend on the location that uh, the stuff is going to. Like I said, this has got to go out tomorrow. That's because of time for where it's going in at, that tomorrow is the optimal or optimal in placement time, if we don't make it tomorrow, we're going to have to wait at least a week. So, now for all my engineer brothers and the Patriot Militia Movements, always remember, essay